You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 24th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, it's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal, where this week we welcome our newest sponsor, Hidden Vaccine Ranch Salad Dressing. Smooth, creamy, and with just a hint of deep state conspiracy, Hidden Vaccine Ranch is perfect for salads, for dipping, and for slipping onto your wingnut anti-vax aunt's Thanksgiving table. Hat tip to alert listener Dexter for sending them our way. Also coming soon to a snack aisle near you, Hidden Vaccine Ranch Flavored Doritos. Because what better place to hide a Bill Gates mind control microchip than in America's favorite corn chip? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Blue Gal. Sure. You just rescued me there from my own twisty tongue. <laughs> we uh, want to thank very much. Start off by thanking The Bill Show. Yes. Uh, Bill is a uh, expat from Australia who does a mm-hmm. podcast, and he does his podcast because we did a podcast. Yes. We are his inspiration. Yes. We are uh, uh, very proud so of that. We, we recommend you go listen to The Bill Show. I have uh, a link to our episode where we are interviewed by Bill. Uh-huh. At our Facebook page and our Twitter stream, mm-hmm. uh, which is at ProLeft Podcast. And uh, yeah, so uh, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, if you want to hear the long story about how we met and got together and mm-hmm. fell in love and got married and started a podcast, not in that order, uh, it's all there at the Bill Show. We are, I dare I say it, now mega worldwide. I think that's we can, right. We I are. Think we can say that. <laughs> We're not stealing any trademarks no, from no. Al Sparks, though. <laughs> a little light infringement, but nothing <laughs> nothing actionable, I presume. No, we are, I'm sorry, we're ultra worldwide, so. Ultra, ultra, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So is uh, Michael Flynn insane, or is he uh, crazy like a fox with this uh, vaccine salad dressing? Well, I think that we are now well into our 30th year of just throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it, it doesn't, the individual lie doesn't matter. You got to keep up the, the, the pace. You got to mm-hmm. keep shooting stuff out there. You got to keep feeding the Fox News beast, the right wing hate beast with whatever, you, whatever crops into your head, whatever vagrant thought a, a crazy traitor like Michael Flynn comes up with and spits out on some, you know, some YouTube channel is just fodder for the beast. And mm-hmm. you know what? Mm-hmm. It does it, in the aggregate is the important thing. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, it's it's an individual drop of water might not bother you, but when mm-hmm. it's a fire hose, it'll knock you flat on your ass. And that's the important thing. They keep up the fire hose, never stop lying to their, you know, shut-ins, their mental shut-ins who are their mm-hmm. audience. And mm-hmm. and who can all go to bed at night knowing that Tucker Carlson is looking over their, over their heads and protecting them from evil communists and wake up in the morning and listen to right-wing hate radio, tell them what they want to hear. That's all that matters to them anymore. So it's like a heroin addiction. It is, as as I wrote a decade and a half ago, mm-hmm. it is exactly like a, a drug addiction. Yeah. And it is as unbreakable uh, by them unless they want to. The difference being um, the minute you break your addiction to heroin or any other drug, mm-hmm. um, you're not cast out of your community. Well, that, but I think you are. I mean, that that's my uh, sense of things from hearing i've been listening to a lot of uh mike doty the music musician who used to be in soul coughing Mm -hmm. and he's written two memoirs and he had to break with everybody when he got clean what i mean is there is no sense that the heroin addict community is america no, right. That there's right. this very large and popular and powerful industry that keeps people addicted to That's right. a narcotic. And the minute you leave that universe, yeah, no, same is true with anybody I know that's gone through um, Al-Anon or, right. or any other program. you got to find all new friends. Yeah, you got to break with yeah. those people. But those people are people that are are not 
running a political party. Right. <laughs> right. The- and profiting. I mean, yes, there is profit in the in the heroin <laughs> industry, but it's not a it's not. First of all, it's not protected by the First Amendment. The heroin no. industry isn't protected by the First Amendment. No. And the heroin industry doesn't go into court and say, well, not a reasonable person wouldn't believe a thing that comes out of Tucker Carlson's mouth. So we get to do whatever we want. Right. And you can move yeah. away. I mean, you yeah. can't escape the the omnipresent Republican propaganda machine. Right. It's everywhere. It's mm-hmm. just everywhere. And that's what um, I I have very patiently and I'm, I remain patient. I There's usually one or two people who just catch my attention on some social media platform talking about what Democrats should do is blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The Democrats need to do is better messaging. They need to have a better, swifter, cleaner, clearer, more cutting, more edgy. I'm like, okay, that's great. That's great. Let's suppose you and I sit down and workshop, you know, a killer 30, 30 second commercial. How exactly is that going to reach the people you're going, you want to reach? Because Democrats don't have their own television network. We don't have our own radio stations. We don't have anything. How exactly? Well, okay. But somehow this should happen. Yeah, I know. But that's. That little um, that that poster that used to be up on science teachers' walls about in the middle of a giant formula, a big starburst that says then a miracle occurs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're waiting for a miracle to happen so that your very valid and important message can reach, you know, the nine people in this country who haven't made up their minds yet. And I I always get back to there's no there's zero chance that the mainstream media is going to change. You and I have been documenting the atrocities for for a decade and a half. Mm-hmm. The Tim Russert days, they're never going to change. They're never going to stop stacking their panels with two Republicans and zero Democrats. Let's just give that up. So now you've given up the entire mainstream media, basically. The stuff that people will go to to get what they believe is an unbiased opinion. And after, after that, it's just a desert. There's nothing left. Nobody that you want to convince is going to watch MSNBC. It's just not going to happen. You mean an undecided person. Right. No undecided right. voter is going to wander into MSNBC and go, you know what? I've been thinking of voting for the fascist party, but I just saw a 30 second ad for Sherrod Brown and I've completely turned around on this thing. Unless well, you know, just- I, I, I'm going to push back on that just a little bit. Okay. Because I think Jimmy Kimmel has had an impact on our politics you in know, terms I, of you're right. you're average right. non-political voters. Mm-hmm. And Stephen Colbert also has had an impact. There are people, you know, The Daily Show has an impact on right. what is cool and what isn't cool. Um I think of our kids and what has been their political influence besides their sainted mother. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's their music and their friends and what passes as cool in their phone centered world. Mm-hmm. And their media does not tolerate police violence, does not tolerate racism does not tolerate bias. They can smell bias a mile away, Mm right-wing bias, especially when it's bathed in white supremacy. They smell it. They are pro-environmental. And it's it's all because of, I think, mostly non-political media. Our girls are not sitting in front of Rachel Maddow every night. No, we tried. Lord knows we tried. (laughs) But they are absorbing from the, the media that they absorb Mm-hmm. which is a lot of it is generated by people their age. Yeah, that's true. Who are influencers in other in other ways and mm-hmm. in sneaks the politics that says, oh, this is unfair. This is not right. Uh, and hopefully we can turn that into, and by the way, if you want the world to look like what you want it to be, you've got to participate in the political process. That's, that's All of that is an entirely fair point. Mm-hmm. Um, I am just... Uh, I, let me let me uh, amend my previous remarks. The people who I'm seeing in our cohort, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. been, yeah. been around the block a few times, who have this fantasy that somehow, some way, the legacy media and the cable news media and radio mm-hmm. are going to turn a corner mm-hmm. um, or or give an opening mm-hmm. to people like uh, uh, Ms. Jayapal, for example. Great mm-hmm. message. Terrific message. We're going to talk about in a little while, but they're going to, they're going to give those people. They're going to give you or or Digby or anyone else, you know, ample time to 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 give really good meaty messages and meaty good really good meaty persuasive arguments that would bring undecideds over is just is just a fairy tale. Give that up. Move on to doing what you can do, but quit waiting for that train that's never going to come. 
any so, any statement that begins with the media should is yeah, is, is a is waste null. of time. Yeah, it's absolutely no. And we know that. And that's why blogging was invented. Yes, and exactly. For, exactly. For nine milliseconds, there was a moment where people took this seriously. Yeah. And said, oh, there's this there's this whole group of people out there who aren't going to put up with the bullshit they see on Sunday morning anymore. And, and I want to add one more caveat about this. I realize how uh, bathed in liberalism and privileged my kids are. Yeah. And that not we can't depend on their entire generation to flip uh, our way. No. Uh, some are going to flip further left than we can even imagine. <laughs> and some, some are going to be right wing assholes. Yes. Oh, I'm. I'm and mm -hmm. that's their battle to fight. Um. But out, Drift Glass, speaking of old fuddy-duddies like us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you realize that liberals have a sup many, many superpowers other than memory, apparently? Uh, I, I did. I did realize. Well, I didn't realize this specific one. Uh, it's, it's always hinted at. It's never explained explicitly. Um, finally, uh, no more uh, a brilliant person than David Frum, mm -hmm. uh, former George Bush speechwriter. Um, Axis of evil guy, David Frum, um, who, who to his credit, has ha figured out that his Republican Party was full of Republicans before a lot of other people did. Yes, he did. And gave up on fighting Obamacare. Um, yeah, and, and he's, then not, was, he's not a bad writer no. like some people. Well, there he, are some never Trumpers out there that are really shitty writers. Yeah, he's it, not a shitty writer. No, he's not a and shitty writer. And he's not unintelligent. No. He has, but, I, a, but his argument this week was a little bit absurd, in well, my opinion. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I, what <laughs> my I title my post that David Frum has written a very lar long article to avoid saying a very short sentence. Mm, yeah. The the long the in the 178th paragraph he gets around to the thing I'm going to talk about, but it's a, an interminable argument, a, a long long article for the Atlantic, which he, he is an editor at, which is nice, I believe, and you can you can have your article published there, but it's thousands of words long. And the sentence that he wants to avoid saying is the left was right about the right all along. Yeah, they all want not, to avoid that. They, they, yeah. None of them want to say it. You can put, and the best of them, even the best of them, which is Stuart Stevens, is not going to say that. He's going to say, I was wrong. I missed it. I screwed up. I enabled this shit and I am sorry. And I'm going to work towards whatever, whatever, which is fine. But he cannot turn the corner and say, you know what? There were people out there who warned us and we told them to fuck off. And we've been telling them to fuck off for 30 years. And I don't expect them to like us anymore. I don't expect them to trust us. We profited off of tel telling the world that they were morons and and hated America. And now here we are in the world that they warned us was coming. And I think we really owe them a fucking apology. Mm -hmm. That's never mm -hmm. going to happen because these people are, David Frum, right down the line, have a, have a deeply ingrained sense of privilege. Well, they, and their, their income and privilege depends upon, in the end, being right. Yeah. <laughs> And being yeah. better than other people. Well, at least <laughs> silencing anyone who would tell them otherwise. Yeah, yeah. But up around the 179th paragraph, <laughs> um, where the, the first is this litany of, you know, of, uh, uh, of, of you know, I, I thought Republicans were this, but they're not. They don't give a shit about deficits. All the stuff that you, you're familiar with, that anyone listening to this podcast would be familiar with. Um, but then he gets around to telling um, he goes full tone police um, about how, you know, it's a, it, the language that people on the left are using. Um, it, it comes down to this one sentence. Here's a warning for the future. The Democratic Party is also home to some abrasive loudmouths, which I'm shocked. Apparently, he's never read a liberal blog and he's just discovering this today. But <laughs> yes, there are, a whole bunch of, blown. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of people who learn to say fuck because they knew they were never going to get a microphone like David Frum just takes for granted. Mm -hmm. And while David Frum was helping George Bush lie us into the wrong war and then wash his hands of the blood from that war, all the people who don't have a big microphone were screaming at the top of their lungs and some of it's got a little salty. Well, David Frum believes that these abrasive loudmouths, who he won't name by name, he will say that uh, none of them ever mounted a serious campaign for the presidency, but others hold high offices and have visible media presences. And what's going to happen is this salty talk from liberals is going to, uh, and I'm quoting, exact immense political costs. <laughs> yep. Because a whole bunch of people in this country who are white people think 
that uh, that they're being discriminated against. And when they hear a bunch of salty liberals like you and me talk shit about them, um, that could doom the republic. These people could be so turned off by by me saying fuck on a podcast that they would flee back into the arms of the fascist party. Um, they're going to run for for Greg Abbott. They're going to head for the hills and, and grab Ron DeSantis. And they're going to go, you know what? I was going to vote against the fascists, but that drift class fella called me a fucking idiot on his podcast. And now I just can't, I can't bring myself to do it. Now this, there's so much to unpack here that I'm not, I'm not going to do a, it justice. But first of all, when did Republicans get so snowflakey <laughs> and pissy about this shit? I'm looking back over a history of Republicans like Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh, who taught the modern GOP how to be the modern GOP, right. who, who were absolute lying racist assholes. And the Republican Party has never had a problem with calling people like you and me every fucking name in the book. Yep. They have, they've never, ever had any moment's regret about yep. giving up civility yep. for attacking us. A noun us. and a verb blame Democrats for hey. every violent act in the universe. Remember when Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson blamed 9-11 on abortionists right. and the ACLU? <laughs> I don't recall them ever taking that. And you know what? Remember, they were never ousted from the party. Remember right. remember Bill O'Reilly got, got Dr. Tiller killed mm -hmm. because he said Tiller the baby killer a million times on his fucking TV show? And he wasn't cast out from Fox for that. He was cast out because he was a, he was a pervert and a sexual predator and got caught doing it. And they gave well, him a billion dollars to go away. I would argue he wasn't even fired for that. He was yeah. fired because he was costing the company too much money. Yeah. And I don't know if, if David Trump has ever heard of Ann Coulter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I went and I, I noted that the politics of slash and burn being being considered – so horrible that nobody should embrace it. And the new kid group was a monster. Was a was a an op ed in the New York Times in 1990. Yeah. When David from before David Frum's voice changed or he started getting hair in weird places, his that was party 31 years ago. Yes. His 31. party. His party embraced this shit. It reveled in this shit. And suddenly a couple of salty blog because it can't be anybody else. I don't know anybody else in the media who's allowed to talk the kind of shit that we talk about the right, because we're not allowed anywhere near a microphone. So I don't know who the hell he's talking about. And But apparently we wield such awesome power that we can <laughs> we can shape the minds of the Republican Party. That's we can, awesome. I can't can, wait to shape the minds of the Republican yeah, Party. We can break the will of the undecided voter and force them against their will uh, to, uh, to flee into the arms of the fascists. I did not realize we had this kind of power. If I'd known wow. this kind of power, I would have asked for a much bigger salary. Um <laughs> I, I would love to live in a world where Digby whipped the shit out of Joe Scarborough three hours oh, yeah. every morning. I'd love to hear, I'd love to live in a world where Atreus is having long conversations with Noam Chomsky about public transit. Um, I'd love to have panels with George Soros and the ghost of Eugene Deb. That'd be great. Every night, the 11th hour on MSNBC, George Soros and the ghost <laughs> of Eugene, Eugene Debs. But I don't live in that world. And honestly, um, giving up this superpower and and curbing my tongue means I will have to give up that few extra dollars each month to come in from my long running New York Times column and my PBS <laughs> gig and my NPR gig and all the college lectures I do, as you know, and my NBC contributor contract. But you know what? Damn it. That's a small price to pay for freedom, blue gal. And I'm willing to pay it. You're willing to pay. I am willing to pay it. God damn it. So, David, from I promise not to say any poo poo pee pee words about your friends on the right. Mm -hmm. As long as you're willing to give me a column at the Atlantic to to talk about what I want to talk about, <laughs> a paid column at the a Atlantic. Paid, a big, yeah, I, I want to give a letter money. to the editor, yeah. that doesn't get published, right? <laughs> Drift class, I want to talk for a minute about education. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have one child left in high school. That's it. The rest ran away, and she's a senior. This is her last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me that um, she doesn't want me to go to open house, and she doesn't want me to go to parent teacher conferences. And we got her report card yesterday, and it was, you know, Shocking. all A's and one B. And, Shocking. And, yeah, she has figured out school. And and she, she hasn't always been that kind of a student, but she has figured out school. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brings me to school board meetings. Yeah. Uh, which have become the Tea Party town halls of Obamacare era. Yes. Are now the anti-mask, anti-critical race theory, places to scream in at a microphone with a camera on mm -hmm. that used to be and are again. 
And we've noticed a trend, Drift Glass. Um, in our local paper, there was an anti-mask <laughs> mandate meeting. Yes. And the reporter is writing about it, and it's in Springfield, and this and that, and this and that. And then it says, the protester who does not have a child in the district. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Eric Bollert was talking about this blonde woman who was written up being very upset about c- uh, critical race theory. And Eric Bollert pointed out, nowhere in this article, nowhere in this Reuters article does it say critical race theory is not taught in second grade. Right, right. It's a law school class. It's this Nowhere is, in this article does it say that. These are racist attention whores. Right. Showing up at school board meetings to scream about an imaginary problem. That Fox than... News has pushed into their brain. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's that's all it is. And it, like any other infestation that shows up in a public setting, the proper thing to do is show at the fucking door. Right. Get them Are out of there. Are you a parent in the district? No, get out. Get out. You can. I mean, it's a public meeting, so they can sit there. But yeah. they cannot address the committee. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a child in the district. It's that simple. You have to be a stakeholder. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> Eric Bowler was just saying, nowhere in this article does it say that this isn't taught in this in the school. Mm-hmm. And then he tweeted again, said, wait a minute. This woman is not a parent in the district. <laughs> oh, strike two. Strike two. Mm-hmm. And uh, today... Uh, my colleague over at Crooks and Liars named Capper, who lives in Wisconsin, uh, found an article quoting Representative Donna Rosar. She's a Republican from Marshfield in the State House in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And she said, quote, I don't want school professionals to make decisions about teaching and learning. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You, know, you have no idea where that might lead, Blue Gal. <laughs> I mean, what? That's a slippery slope towards education, Blue Gal. We that's don't what want it that. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never, you know, you don't, I guess you just have parents come in and scream at the kids about critical race theory and then their education is complete. Look, I'm trying to raise a passel of Fox News bred um, cannon fodder. Oh and your, your education is messing it all up. So I appreciate it. Well, if a you couple just of stopped. weeks ago, I tweeted about the woman who wanted, I found a woman on Twitter who wanted to pay her two teenage children a hundred dollars each to read the book American Fascism. Uh huh. And neither one of them would do it. One of them said that would be a total waste of my time, and the other said, "I don't need to read it. You talk about it twenty four seven, three sixty five, mom." And so the kids are all right. <laughs> In that regard, the kids are all right. Uh. We had the opportunity to uh, sit together in the living room yesterday and watch Hal Sparks for a few minutes. We did. And he was covering Dan Bongino. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> John Bongino was very upset because uh, about he was mad at the mainstream media. The mainstream media the for mainstream lying. mainstream media is covering this story, this horrific story, of mm-hmm. some Border Patrol agents uh, whipping migrants. Yes, on horseback. Mm-hmm. On horseback. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently they used the uh, reins of their horses to whip people. And I'm using whip at this point as a verb. They whipped them with their reins from their horses, whipped migrants on the ground. They were on horseback and they used their reins of their horse to whip these migrants. And the reason that this is important to, to understand is that we watched we watched Hal Sparks watching Dan Bongino conjugate the word whip for about 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And every, because, and this is exactly where the all of these assholes go when they have no other argument to make. Mm-hmm. They find some syntactical glitch in the mm-hmm. sentence in some fucking magazine. And it, 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 well, these weren't whips. These weren't whips. These, these were reins, if anything. And, don't you know what the word whip means? I mean, have you ever seen a whip? Were they really using whips? Did they have whips? I mean, here we go. And and he went through this hysterical, mm-hmm. uh, obviously twenty minute out. argument. Twenty minutes. And um, this is this is somebody who's whips. I assume yes. shoots you know roids directly into his eyeball because he's <laughs> always this angry about little things like this. 
Uh, but he's furious that the mainstream, this is how the mainstream media lies to you all the time. And, and he, he turned this entire thing into whether or not you got the word right describing the leather strap that was being used to beat people. Right. Not the right. fact that it was happening or the fact that it was documented or the fact that most articles said either a whip or reins to lash people mm -hmm. or that there was correction because none of that matters to Dan Bongino. Dan, Dan yep. Bongino just wants to get you shitting yourself angry over some stupid little thing that he can then jack into a giant media conspiracy and why liberals are all lying, stupid assholes. They're stupid and idiots and they're lying. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And again, if if this were just some drunken idiot. Random, even writing, with a YouTube channel. What? <laughs> writing, <laughs> you know, in the park or writing public transit at two in the morning who wants to tell you all about the liberals, I wouldn't care. I'd change my seat. I'd get off the bus and I'd urge others to do so but this is someone who has the full faith and credit of fox news behind him yeah and this is someone who has millions of people listening to him and and hanging on his every word and i want to talk to those people and find <laughs> out what happened to them along the way that made them into what they are now to, to why i can understand why hal sparks deconstructs this because it is it is like a chemist taking apart a toxin to figure out why it's killing people. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. understand that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I cannot understand. Uh, well, this, I lied. I understand fully the mindset of these people because I'm a good writer and I listen to people and I'm surrounded by people who think this way, but I don't know what you do about it other than make sure that they are deprived of any public platform of any, any, any office. I would like to strip them of the right to vote, but I can't do have that power. And, and, Get them the hell off of the throat of my country. And it's it's this thing every day. Again, this is one drop of water, two drops of water is not the thing, but it's this fire hose that is always blasting away at the at the base of our democracy from these people. Clearly, they want to bring this country down. Clearly, they want to whip their mob into such a frenzy that they're going to start shooting people. And then they can say, well, you know how it, 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 this, and then they rely on Chuck Todd to say, well, in this polarized country. Right. Both it's sides, it's blah, blah, blah. polarization, really. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, they're coming for us. And Dan Bongino is what they look like. Yep. <laughs> and yep. unless we take them seriously and start depriving them of power. But, you know, a lot of them look like Mitch McConnell. Yeah. They look they look like that 1940s, 1950s Southern um, pasty pencil neck bigot who has a gun mm -hmm. and has the law on his side. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's Mitch McConnell, that goggle eyed hate-filled, um, smirking antichrist that is perfectly willing to destroy the U.S. economy. Um, yeah. Burn the whole yeah. thing down just to, just to win office again. Um, and he wouldn't be able to do that. That would be an impossible task. They would be laughed off the planet, but for the fact there are 70-plus million idiots in this country who are perfectly okay with that. Yeah. And there's yeah. no viable strategy I've ever heard of from anybody as to what to do about the fact that this toxic sludge isn't going anywhere. It's just getting worse. Mm -hmm. Let's talk for a minute about this big story that came out this week from the New York Times about the yeah. Trump campaign's lawyers knowing that the big yeah. lie was a big lie. Yep. Uh, Fox News is completely ignoring this story. Uh -huh. That Trump knew, Kellyanne Conway knew, Hope Hicks knew, Mike Lee knew, Lindsey Graham, all of them. They mm -hmm. all knew Trump had lost the election fair and square. Yeah. And uh, there are memos to this effect. Rudy Giuliani and his passel of Kraken lawyers saw an opportunity to make money and went with this big lie in order to keep the dollars rolling in. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an interview in the Washington Post, you know, Costa and Woodward are everywhere this week. You can't get away from them. Um, but uh, this interview in the Washington Post, uh, just three sentences. Mr. Uh, Mr. Costa says, you see, after the election, President Trump seemed to acknowledge privately that he had probably lost to Joe Biden. He says to Kellyanne Conway and others, I can't believe I got defeated by this guy. Mike Lee of Utah, very conservative, very pro-Trump. They got mm -hmm. memos and documents from the White House saying, look, we have all this evidence that the election was stolen. So Lindsey Graham and Mike Lee, in a very dutiful way, which we lay out in the book, 
investigated this. It wasn't just kind of, oh, we'll accept this or we'll reject it. They investigated and they found absolutely none, zero evidence, zero evidence that the election was stolen. Uh huh. They all knew, every one of them. Of course and they knew. Fox News is completely ignoring this story. People are not being told. Well, why would they? Fox News right. doesn't exist to tell well, people. Well, and the money needs to keep coming in from the gullible base. Yeah. yeah. Well, and let's face it, all these same people knew perfectly well that Barack Obama was born in this country. Right. They right. all knew. Every every single stinking last one of these traitors and scum knew that Barack Obama was born in this country. And they went along with it because it was working. Mm-hmm. And then so, when, so talk when, about what what the racist neighbors are listening to this week, because this yeah. is dovetails right into it. Well, yeah. And, and when the birther lie ran out of juice, when it was no longer when, when Donald Trump had to say one way or the other, he in the most in the shittiest way possible said, well, I guess he was born here. Next mm-hmm. question. That was it. Because mm-hmm. the, the lie had served its purpose. Yeah. And all the people who ran with it, who supported it, who who bulwarked it, who who approved it none of them lost their job none no. there's no social no. stigma at all to doing this and that's the part that's so terrifying is that it's now just baked into our daily conversation that we just have to accept the fact that one of our two political parties are sabotaging traitors who will do everything in their power to wreck this country and who have and, no accountability and we just have to accept that yeah. that's just a fa- right. fact of nature yeah. and and democrats need to you know work across the aisle or somewhat or accommodate them or somehow this is our problem Right. The fact right. that you fucked your party up so badly that it's going to kill us is now my problem. I accept the fact that it's my problem in the same way that you starting a fire that's spreading to my neighborhood is now my problem. But I didn't start it. And I would, I'm damn well not going to give you credit for standing on the side going, no, here's what you should do. Let me mm-hmm. tell you how right. to fix this right. thing. So this week, your racist neighbors are probably listening to either Tucker Carlson saying about vaccine requirements in the military uh, that they are a ploy to quote, identify the sincere Christians in the ranks, the free thinkers, the men with high testosterone levels, and anybody else who doesn't love Joe Biden and make them leave immediately. Leave or, the military. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a it's a plot by the gay agenda to drive decent yeah. Christian men with high testosterone out of the military. Well, that's Dan Bongino said the same thing last sure. week, that the, the liberals are trying to get conservatives to hate the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, nothing. That's the plot. There's no better avatar for big, strapping, brave men than Tucker Carlson. <laughs> really. I mean, you know, you look at this guy, you know, look, he's unstoppable. It's, it's like The Rock and Arnold Schwarzenegger had a baby and gave it a bow tie. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Or they might be listening to the, the Breitbart Collective saying that the Dems are guilty of genocide because we're tricking Trumpers into believing that they can own the libs by not getting vaccinated. So, so that, does that mean that conservatives are supposed to get vaccinated now it's that triple reverse psychology thing that would work if they had a functioning brain between them but they mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. See, this kind of trickery might work on like a drunk dog um <laughs> look look over there look over there I, 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 I. but it, it's it's way too sophisticated to yeah. work on you know trump voters who no, are just... but i think i think there is a long-term strategy with a lot of this stuff because oh, sure. the, whole, the whole replacement theory bullshit that Tucker Carlson, which is flat out racist and yeah. flat out straight out of Nazis. Yes, it is. Is a long term strategy to delegitimize elections. Well, every and it's, time Republicans lose, it's well, it's because illegals got to vote and mm-hmm. Biden and the Democrats brought all these brown illegals in to replace us and make us lose Texas. And and why are and all that, these yeah. why are all these Trumpers dying liberals? Liberals, Liberals right, are tricking right. them into dying. It's always, always, and there's no, there's no, there's no court you can go to. There's no venue. <laughs> no. There's no place to go and 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 litigate any of this. There's no place where you can grab Tucker Carlson by his pencil neck and drag him into a room and make him account for what he does because he makes too much money for a corporation that is willing to kill six hundred thousand Americans right. to win elections. Hey, I want to, I want to prescribe some solutions and some positivity into this conversation. You go ahead. Because I think it's time for liberals to get very comfortable with exercising power. You know, and- I was thinking the same thing now that da- <laughs> now that David Frum has filled me with the sense of, <laughs> of Thanos <laughs> level power. Thanos like, level. <laughs> how can I exercise that power uh, effectively, Blue Gal? Yeah. And well, 
I mean, I think we need to get rid of the filibuster and go into a talking filibuster at the very most. Uh But uh, Republicans have always been happy, as you say, to hold the lives of innocent Americans hostage to their demands. They don't care. They care about power, not people. But if we want to get the big things done, we have to work hard all the time to reframe every debate and keep asking, why is it always progressives who are being told they have to give up their priorities? One of the things that has really short-circuited the Beltway media this week is that the House progressives have not budged. Mm-hmm. And you know the, the rules are, we're supposed to budge. We're right. supposed to compromise. Everyone we're the ones that. who are supposed to give everything up. Remember the health care debate? Yeah. Remember public option? Oh, no, you're supposed to cave on that. You're supposed to cave on the price of, the, of everything. And uh, we've got a president who is not caving. We have a, a House Progressive Caucus that is holding firm. And uh, I had to uh, do a strikeout in the notes that you typed up here, Driftglass. Mm-hmm. Because you said that uh, Pramila Jayapal has been very good at explaining this in the very limited minutes she has been given on MSNBC. And I would argue she's been given extensive minutes this week. Um, She's been on multiple times. Mm -hmm. And that speaks well to Democratic House messaging. Nancy Pelosi is letting her go on TV. Yes, of course she is. And be the spokesperson. Of course she is. And... uh, we knew this from the first rescue package that the buzz in the Senate was Pramila won't go along with that. We mm-hmm. can't, if we want to get this through quickly, we have to send a bill back to the House that the House Progressive Caucus will vote for. Otherwise, we're going to have to go through conference and we're going to have to negotiate again. Mm-hmm. It has to meet the standard of the progressive caucus that is holding together. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Jayapal has said over and over again this week that I think is really good messaging. She has pointed out that her colleagues who are in uh, close districts, purple districts, districts Mm -hmm. that are at risk are all for passing this package. The $3.5 trillion. Right. Over 10 years. That is half of what the uh, Defense Department spends. Right. Because they want child care and college and elder care and clean air and clean water in their districts. Mm -hmm. And they know that passing those things that are very popular will serve them in their re-election bid. Mm -hmm. So... uh, I think her messaging is spot on. The White House messaging, they put out a press release today, really explaining carefully, why are we letting teachers get taxed at a higher rate than corporations? Yeah. And it's simple. It is is straightforward. And it is something that is very popular. So, um, you know, I don't think she's been given limited minutes. I think she's been the spokesperson for um, progressives, for Democrats. Uh, and, and I think she's doing a good job. And I, I do think that what's happening is the Beltway Press and the Beltway cocktail party circuit, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. is short circuiting. They're not used to this. This is no. not how the game's played. It's, and, and they would rather talk about how both sides see advantages in the debt ceiling debate, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is not true. No, no. Well, and- um, and she, she's also very good at explaining that this was a position that we made very clear from the very beginning. It's a deal that we that struck in the March. Reason, yes. The reason that the um, the basic infrastructure bill got all of our support, will get all of our support, even though there's parts of it we do not like and yeah, think are bad. that are actually hostile to the Green New Deal. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of giveaways to a lot of fossil fuel companies, a lot of the fossil fuel industry. And that was a tough and bitter pill for them to swallow. But they swallowed it on the understanding that th- that what we'll get in return is this other bill passed via reconciliation mm-hmm. without a lot of dicking around. Right. And what we're asking now is nothing more than – and the reason we're jammed up on time is because the original infrastructure bill – was delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And finally, they got their shit together. So all we're asking is a couple of weeks, just like you gave the other guys, 
mm-hmm. to do exactly the same thing, get our ducks in a row. Right. And nothing about what she says is unreasonable. Right. Well, and, and that, also that apparently the highway spending runs out on the 30th of, of September. Yeah. Well, so you have, you quote unquote, have to pass something by the 30th. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're, we, we are uh, team Pramila. Yeah. She's doing a <laughs> fine job. She's doing, yeah. and, and this is, you know, I listened to um, um, Adam Kinzinger. Uh. <laughs> you know, hero of the revolution, Adam Kinzinger. No, not um, our friend. <laughs> no. Um, yesterday or the day before on the Bulwark podcast. Today, it's Rick Wilson. I'm not even going to bother mentioning what that bullshit's about. But let's remember that none of the Republicans voted for the debt ceiling increase in the House. None. That means your hero, Adam Kinzinger. That means Liz Cheney. Anthony, Liz Cheney, Anthony, all the people that are being held up as as the last best hope of this dead GOP party. None of them voted for it. And Kinzinger said, well, you know, it's uh, it's because these progressives over here, you know, they're uh, they're crazy. They're, and he says literally on, the, on this podcast, the progressive caucus is exactly the same thing as the freedom caucus. They're the same because he wants a third fucking party called the Adam Kinzinger party. Uh-huh. But he couldn't vote for it because, you know, we pulled progressives pulled a billion dollars out of it for Israel. And I just couldn't do it. I just, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't, I could not save the economy. But you mean they subtracted? Yeah, they support for Israel, which they did not do. That's simply a lot. And 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 the part that's so transparently bullshit is that a Adam Kinzinger is nobody's friend. Yes, at all. Adam Kinzinger is angling for a seat on MSNBC or CNN or a third party or something. He's very clear about the fact that his his dream is to is to is to create out of all these imaginary independents and centrists because both sides are equally bad. That's always been his his party line. And second, within 12 hours of that money being pulled from that bill, it was added right back in mm-hmm. in, a, in a separate bill. I did suggest it to Representative Kinzinger, who is very, very anti-choice and yeah. very, very anti-socialized medicine, that perhaps he could, he could persuade Israel to skimp a little bit on the free and legal abortion services. Yeah. Which yeah. are covered under the national health care system, which our tax dollars underwrite. Yeah. And that is not a discussion that Adam Kinzinger or anybody on the right wants to have. Yeah. Abortion because, on demand in Israel is just yeah. great. Yep. It's great. I have no problem with it. I have I'm I'm cool with it. It is the fact that you guys are fanatical that you first of all, abortion should never be countenanced, but much less subsidized. And secondly, socialized medicine is communism for God's sakes. Well, if you think that then tell Israel to shift some of its funding out of the national health care system yeah. to buy Not going to happen in no. any industrialized country that has it. As as Bill on the Bill Show pointed no. out, you know, what AOC is fighting for is what every other industrialized nation already has and had since the 40s. Yeah. Um, you want to just uh, talk for a second about Tom Hartman? Oh, I just, this is just a... This is just how my day has been going. My week has been going. I got in the car to do some errands. I turned on the Tom Hartman show, which I don't listen to all that much. I tuned in literally just in time to hear him quoting extensively from Charlie Sykes' newsletter. Oh, poor and then I, class. And I said, you know what? There's an oldies radio station on here somewhere I can find. And I found <laughs> it. And it was like, you know, Inner Sanctum or Sherlock Holmes or something. And it was delightful. Oh, but I'm like. The old time radio. Yeah. 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 Uh, I. Tweeted today, and this tweet just caught fire, so I wanted to mention this on the podcast, too. Um, Walmart is no longer doing layaway for Christmas. Instead, they will loan you money to buy things at Walmart at 10 to 30% interest. Their financial partner is called Affirm, which is now also a partner with Amazon and is a very well-funded startup company in the buy now, pay later universe. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, just reminding everyone, being poor is expensive. Mm-hmm. Very, very expensive. And it's a full-time job. And it's a full-time job. Yeah. Um, speaking of social media, I found this on the internet. in reply to the umpteen zillionth complaint I saw about, why are Democrats getting stuff done? And the person who I, I don't have their name at the on the tip of my tongue says, ask the parents that getting a little something for each kid now if something has been done. Ask the about 250 million of us who've been vaxxed if something's been done. Ask the families of the returning soldiers if war being over is something done. There are things getting done. They're not getting done at the pace I would want or that you would want. Uh, As we talked about on the Bill Show with Bill, um, hey, I don't get what I want in this country. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 it's really hard to explain to people that I'm not happy with Obamacare. I accept the fact that it's the best we have at the moment. I want universal health care. I want all the stuff Bernie Sanders wants. All of it. I want all I want the whole Megilla. But I understand how politics actually works. And getting there, given the broken down vehicle with four square tires that we are driving currently, as people are lobbing grenades at us, is a painful and slow and frustrating and maddening process. And I'm not gonna see this country be the country I wish it were wish it would be. In my lifetime, that is just not going to happen. But I can help inch it a little bit forward. And I understand how frustrating it is that everything isn't happening the way we want it to happen. I am equally frustrated and how dark the future looks sometimes. Um, and all I can say is that there's more of us than there are of them, and we're on the right side of history. And it isn't a matter of poor messaging or poor wordsmithing. It's the fact that the other side is willing to outspend us 100 to 1 on giant megaphones and mm-hmm. lying demagogues to scream through them. That's yeah, why I didn't, I didn't put that in our notes, the $10 million ad buy that's going to go on to tell vulnerable Democrats in the House to call them out on taxes, taxes, taxes. Right. And you're telling poor voters that their taxes are going to go up, which is a lie. Which is a lie. Of course, it's a lie. Yeah. But there is no big pot of money that you or I have access to, to buy up all the ads around that ad to tell those same poor people that they're being lied to by a bunch of ghoulish fascist demagogues who want to, who are desperate to turn this country into an, an oligarchical shithole. Right. Right. Speaking of oligarchical shitholes, drift glass, Lauren Boebert. Oh no, not her. Uh, her campaign finance reports stink to high heaven. Um, (laughs) this is so weird because the story that's being reported is that she corrected her FEC filing and The headline is she spent money, campaign money on rent and utilities, personal rent and personal utilities. Now, that would be bad enough. She spent campaign money on personal rent and personal utilities. But there's something beneath the surface here that that caught my eye that I think is extremely fishy and not transparent. Because her she, her campaign is saying, oh, and we reimbursed the money and it was a mistake and it was a Venmo error and it was this and that. But Forbes has a paragraph about this that really caught my eye. After each Venmo disbursement, the ones that she says she reimbursed, the updated filing now includes payments with the same amounts, dates, and descriptions to someone named John Pacheco, whose address is listed as 120 East 3rd Street in Rifle, Colorado. That's the address of Shooter's Grill, Bobert's Restaurant. Oh, God. Bobert's spokesperson did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Well, so this idiot has a truckload of money pouring in from MAGA for her performative right wing bullshit, where she goes on the House floor and says rape victims don't need abortion. They need a Glock. That's what she said yesterday Mm -hmm. to 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 do and she's, what? she's using Venmo account to, to defend themselves against their attacker. Oh, I was going to say to... You, to, you uh, know how many women are in prison for killing their abuser rapist? Oh, Most I was going to... rape victims know their assailant I, I personally. Was, I was thinking she might be wanting them to threaten or off the people who keep passing horrible anti-abortion laws. <laughs> but... No. 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 Okay. No. I I would never suggest that myself. But no, if that's what you Lauren would never suggest something like that. No. Bell. No. No. But if Lauren Boebert is saying that people should take up arms against anti-abortion monsters, no, I'm not going to stand in their way. No. But she's using Venmo for accounting. She uh-huh. the the FEC is completely weak and toothless because mm-hmm. half of them are Republicans, and she's depending on the shortest attention span of her Republican base and the mainstream media to get away with all of it. Um, and, and who is this guy that she's paying who apparently lives at her restaurant? Um, and then I just wanted to briefly mention that the Trump unity bridge crashed into a telephone pole yesterday, Driftglass. Oh no, I was unaware of this story and I feel the worse for it. It's in Michigan. Uh, Mm -hmm. there's this gigantic sign that says Trump unity on it. And, uh, it is complete with signs reading "All Lives Matter," "Build the Wall," "Make America Great Again," et cetera, et cetera. This uh, gigantic sign that is on a trailer 
pulled by an ambulance that has Trump painted on the side of it. He bought an ambulance to tow this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sign has become a familiar sight at events across the state of Michigan, including protests at the state capitol and rallies. It's owned by a guy named Rob Cordes, who was returning from an anti-mask protest, which he said was, you know, for the kids. Mm -hmm. (laughs) When he had a mishap involving two other cars. Oh, no. And it crashed into telephone pole. Now, you could say this is an allegory for the current (laughs) politics of our time, if you wish. But my question is, I wonder if this anti-masker believes in car insurance and the federal and state laws that require those other motorists involved in the accident to carry insurance, you know, to protect everyone around them. I'm wondering why this hero was wearing a (laughs) seatbelt. Because, you know, seatbelts are just another deep state conspiracy to keep you from, I don't know, leaping from your car and saving. Yeah, it's tyranny, Driftglass. Anytime the government tells you anything, it's It's tyranny. tyranny. Anytime. And there are states in the South now that are looking at all vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crazy. I stole an inappropriate metaphor, but I think an accurate one, for why people like me are feeling the way we feel. And that's that. All the stuff we warned you was going to happen, we were told would never happen, is all happening. But it's mm-hmm. all happening all at once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it, what we're having to do now is triage our politics. And I'm learning how to say that word. Yes. Triage. Triage. It is, it, our political and cultural ER room is already overflowing with Republican atrocities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more keep pouring in the door every day. Mm-hmm. And there mm-hmm. are there are a handful of people running around like ER nurses, exhausted, pissed off, furious at people who keep letting this happen, trying to keep everything together just one more day. Right. And then there's Republicans who just keep blowing shit up, knowing that if we just crash the system, if we can just burn the hospital down, then we can seize power forever. And that's that's the sense of exhaustion I think people are feeling is that there's not one problem. There's 20 mm-hmm. and they're all legitimate mm-hmm. and they're all scary and they're all big and they all demand our attention. And we do not have the bandwidth to think about them all mm-hmm. or tackle them all. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't have the money like Republicans do to have a separate think tank for each thing that they want to do. And it is, it is exhausting. But the only reassurance I can give you is that we're all tired together. We've yeah. all been in this war yeah. together. We've all been slogging through this swamp up to our chin for a very long time now. And you are not alone. And there's more of us than there are of them. And the arc of history is on our side. Yeah. Well, Jeff Class, I also want to say that um, the old story about uh, thinking that Democrats are like cats. You think they're fighting like mad and they're just making more cats. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, This week has been a week of watching how the sausage is made when it comes to passing legislation and feeling because we have been disappointed so many times Mm -hmm. and because we have been forced to compromise our values and principles so many times and because we're tired of being bullied, we're exhausted by it, Mm -hmm. Um, seeing uh, the potential that our people, our party will... uh, you know, the Joe Mansions and Christian cinemas, the traitors in our ranks will blow everything up and not let us have just decent, you know, senior care and child right. care. It's right. not things that are controversial. No. Um, it is exhausting. And it's it's so important that we take care of ourselves, that mm-hmm. all of us and all of you out there take care of yourself. Deep breath. Do postcards to voters. I did them this week. That When I'm feeling really amped up by all the news, that's what I do to mm-hmm. uh, chop wood and carry water. I wrote 10 postcards to uh, one of the counties in Florida to get Democrats to register to vote by mail and give them the details on how to do that. And uh, voting by mail is the most secure way to vote. And to make sure you do vote because that ballot sits on your kitchen table and you do it. You vote. So, um, you know, do the things that you can, all the good that you can mm-hmm. with the power that you've got. And, uh, yeah. And well, and you told me yesterday that you're not a real liberal. You're not a real Democrat unless you can quote Ted Kennedy's speech from 1980. The, so. the last line of Ted Kennedy's <laughs> speech from 1980. If you uh-huh. can't do that, then... <laughs> 
And I, I want to know and you. You said, let's do it together. And I said, the dream shall never die. And what did you say? I said, death to the West. <laughs> that, that's how I understood that's how you it. remember it. Yeah, that's how I remember it. That's, this is, okay, to be fair, I didn't hear it. It was told to me by my good friend, Rick Wilson. Um, <laughs> and in one of his long screeds against how Democrats suck at everything and <laughs> are fools for not hiring Rick Wilson to run their Rick elections. Oh and God. to his credit, to his credit, Rick Wilson is very good at getting mouth-breathing racist Republicans to the polls sure. by scaring the shit out of them. But the problem he has is we don't have any of those in our party. So he doesn't know what to do except bitch that people don't hire him to run their elections. Uh huh. Meanwhile, in the news, grim statistic, more than 675,000 people in the United States have died of COVID-19, which surpasses this country's 1918 influenza pandemic death toll. The U.S. accounts for about 14% of total COVID-19 deaths globally, despite the widespread availability of vaccines. Roughly 25% of eligible Americans, those 12 and older, remain unvaccinated. That comes to about 72 million people. In a show dedicated to COVID and election fraud conspiracies this week, Michael Flynn brought up an article he read mm -hmm. that the deep state medical establishment is planning to secretly put the COVID vaccine in salad dressing. The House passed legislation to fund the government through December 3rd and extend the debt limit until after the 2022 elections in a party line vote with no Republicans supporting the bill. The fiscal package is needed to avoid a government shutdown and a first ever default on the U.S. debt. The bill now, has the, now heads to the Senate, where Mitch McConnell has vowed that Republicans will not support raising the debt ceiling. The 10 Republicans in support, the bill would fail to advance past the 60-vote filibuster threshold. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said, this is playing with fire, playing games with the debt ceiling, is playing with fire and putting it on the back of the American people. Failure to raise the debt ceiling could cost the U.S. economy six million jobs, wipe out $15 trillion in household wealth, and send the unemployment rate to roughly 9%, up from around 5%, and plunge the country into an immediate recession, according to the chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Here's an important note. No Republicans supporting the bill means that never Trump or hero Adam Kinzinger refused to vote for it, never Trump or hero Anthony Gonzalez refused to vote for it, and never Trump or hero Liz Cheney refused to vote for it. Regarding the debt ceiling hostage situation, our messaging is getting out there. Mm -hmm. This is from The Week. Democrats and progressive commentators are frustrated not just with the GOP's nihilism, but at both sides' media coverage <gasps> of the issue. We got a bumper sticker for that. We do. Mm -hmm. If the blame is generally apportioned to both sides, it nevertheless seems like the onus is always on the Democrats to fix the problem, Dan Frumkin wrote Tuesday at Press Watch. Senator Brian Schatz agreed on Twitter, I'm sick to my stomachs that Republicans are explicitly promising to take the country into an economic abyss. And many reporters are like, how, Willie? How will Democrats navigate this? It's simply taken for granted that Republicans break things and Democrats clean up after them, added Josh Marshall of Talking Points Memo. Uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas vowed to complete an investigation into the treatment of Haitian immigrants at the Texas-Mexico border after videos showed mounted border patrol agents running down migrants and using their reins as whips. Mayorkas told the House Homeland Security Committee that an undisclosed number of agents have already been placed on administrative duty. House Democrats, meanwhile, demanded that Customs and Border Protection officials brief the Oversight Committee this week about agent conduct, direction they receive from their supervisors, and disciplinary action being taken. Because of accountability, Drift Glass? Is that what it yeah. means? We, we do yeah. that. We, we believe, even when, I, you know, I guarantee you that Joe Biden did not give an order to these yeah, people go, to go, go out and beat people. immigrants, right. but he is responsible. And yes, ultimately, yes. he is responsible. And The and, buck stops with him. Yes. I assume he, more than almost anyone, wants to get to the bottom of what the hell happened and fix it, because that's and what we hire do. hire some people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. An attorney who worked with Trump's legal team tried to convince Mike Pence that he could overturn the 2020 presidential election results by ignoring the results from seven states. Yep. In a two-page memo, John Eastman, who is deeply embedded within the Heritage Foundation, by the way, laid out a six-step plan for Mike Pence to overturn the election for Trump 
Under Eastman's scheme, Pence could then declare Trump the winner with more Electoral College votes at 232 votes to 222. Eastman and Trump proposed the plan to Pence on January 4th in the Oval Office. Yeah. Um, I remember um, a Republican breaking down in tears during the Watergate hearing Mm -hmm. when he heard a tape of his president, who he believed in, um, being being Breaking the law. Being yeah. pitched an idea for blackmailing, and he didn't that, and his president didn't kick that man out immediately and say, "You're in the Oval Office. How dare you?" Mm-hmm. He just sat there, mm-hmm. and and they hatched a plan to blackmail people and bribe them. Right. This treason was hatched in the Oval Office of the White House by the President of the United States and his henchmen, which is a hundred times worse than Nixon ever did. And if they don't pay a hundred times worse of a price than Nixon ever did then there is no possibility that this will ever stop because the only way you stop a traitor is by making them pay for their treason. Uh, in a separate internal memo issued two weeks after the 2020 election shows that the Trump campaign knew the election conspiracies pushed by pro-Trump lawyers, Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell were baseless and false. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection will move straight to subpoena some recalcitrant witnesses. <laughs> Excuse me cough a little bit there. Trump filed a $100 million lawsuit against his niece, the New York Times, and three of its reporters claiming that they conspired in an insidious plot to obtain his tax returns for a Pulitzer Prize winning story that detailed his undisclosed finances. I believe his daughter or his niece rather called him a fucking loser. Fucking loser. (laughs) He's doing doing this so he can do fundraising emails. Oh, sure. Just like he's doing Twitter. It's the same thing. You throw yeah. a bunch of lawyers at something, claim that you're the victim, and and fundraise off. And of you it, say which is... and and support my lawsuit mm-hmm. against Twitter. You know, oh yeah, we got to do that. Okay. The Senate's parliamentarian blocked the Democrats' plan to use the 3.5 trillion dollars social and climate package to provide a path to citizenship for an estimated eight million immigrants. And I personally think that uh, Democrats should just ignore the parliamentarian. Yeah, which they're allowed to do. If the vice president says thumbs up, then they can go go ahead. I just stop listening to people who disagree with you, frankly, because, you know, people who disagree with you inside the party, you know, that's fine. We we have, this is a big party with a big tent and we fight all the time. But people who are bitching, who are in the Republican party or in the mainstream press, tell them to fuck off. You know, the one thing that Trump did that was right was tell the media to go screw themselves. Yeah. And I fully support the next time someone asks a question like that to say, and Jen Psaki will never do this because she's a much better person than I am, but, <laughs> but tell, frog marching him out the door saying, fuck you, you can't come in this room anymore, you asshole. Next question. Yeah. The Supreme Court will hear arguments December 1st on Mississippi's restrictive abortion law, which bans abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The case has been blocked by lower courts because it directly violated Roe versus Wade's protection for pre-viability abortion. And that's just hearing arguments. That's not making a decision. That won't right. happen until next they're summer. Willing, they're willing to hear arguments to overturn Roe versus Wade, which I'm sure shocks Susan Collins. Just oh, she's so pieces. disappointed. Yeah. Here's some scary news. A University of Chicago study found that 47 million American adults, nearly one in five, agree with the statement that, quote, the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump and Joe Biden is an illegitimate president. One in five. Of those, 21 million also agree that the use of force is justified to restore Donald J. Trump to the presidency. Mm -hmm. Our survey found, says the University of Chicago, many of these 21 million people with insurrectionist sentiments have the capacity for violent mobilization. At least 7 million of them already own a gun, and at least 3 million have served in the U.S. military, which means they have lethal skills. Mm-hmm. Of tw- of those 21 million, less than a little less than a third, 6 million, said they supported right-wing militias and extremist groups. And 1 million said they are themselves or personally know a member of such a group, including the Oath Keepers and Proud Boys. Mm-hmm. This is where the FBI has said domestic terrorism is the number one threat to the homeland. And it is. And this is this is an example, not, not this specific one, but this is an example that every time I read a poll... And it's X and Y. I mm-hmm. always subtract. I go, okay, all right, what's the Y number? And let's subtract 30% of the population who are unsalvageably, you know, mm-hmm. dumb, who are mm-hmm. unsalvageably um, brainwashed. Brainwashed, yeah. So that's because mm-hmm. I don't care what they think. I don't care. I don't give a good goddamn what Republicans think about anything because they're just all terrible. So I want to find out 
what the remaining 60% people of people in this country think of things. The people, the roughly 30%, 35% who agree, broadly speaking, with Democrats, and that sliver that are left over who are always changing their mind because they don't want to be on the bad side of anything. Um, We didn't have time today, Drift Glass, to talk about the hack on the right-wing server website where there's this uh, large hack of right-wing Proud Boys members and oh, no. Oath Keepers members, and there oh, no. a lot of them had this. Um, the person, the tech person over at Crooks and Liars, was just howling because some of the passwords were people's middle names and their house, their current house number, and like he just he just couldn't believe the stupidity of some people. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, this hack uh, really has these groups spooked, and you know we also didn't talk about the 18th, the Saturday. Uh, quote unquote rally where less than 200 people showed up. Right. Um, right. These groups are now really worried that their uh, circle has been infiltrated by the FBI and they should be. Oh, that's true. I know, <laughs> I personally know two dozen people who are inf- deep infiltrators in, in the Oath Keepers <laughs> and Proud Boys. They report back to us at Liberal Command all Headquarters time, once a all week. All the time. Yeah. yeah. We have a secret code. <laughs> Yeah, um, we, yeah. we do. We fool them by using correct syntactical English. And, <laughs> and, then, it, and then they have to diagram a sentence right, and which, use whip as a verb. Damn it. Okay, get up to the board <laughs> and, and diagram the following sentence. If they can't do it, we know they're not one of us. They're not one um, of us. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, this is the story that probably none of you have been following because you don't care about oh, what's really important Oh, but this is something world. dear to Drift Glass's it heart. Is. Uh, this is from the Washington Post. So, you know, believe it or don't. For years, the Netherlands has held the world's title for having the tallest people on the planet. But new data from the Office of National Statistics suggests that the height of the average Dutch person is shrinking. And scientists are puzzled as to why. Well, I can tell you why. It's because those people are sick and tired of not being able to find clothes that fit, of banging their heads on door frames made for little putions, and losing all the feeling in their legs for hours on end because they have to fold themselves up like a card table to fit onto airplanes. That's why. So they're shorter by choice. That, well, they're getting there. They're realizing <laughs> the world is hostile to tall people. So they're, they're deciding, you know what? As a country, we need to shorten ourselves down a little bit um, <laughs> to accommodate the fact the world hates tall people. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is another dog. This is an 11-year-old puppy named <laughs> Karma. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike most of our internet pets of the week, however, Karma doesn't sit and wait for her food to be freshly poured. What? Karma eats a mix of canned food and kibble, and she will sit there and stare until it is warmed up in the microwave. Oh, geez. Um, This is because Karma has an allergy to food storage mites, so her kibble is kept in the freezer. Also, they're feeding her half a can of wet food a day, and that that other half is kept in the refrigerator. So everything is cold. When they go to put it in her dish, it's all cold. So oh, she has go. gotten so used to having her food warmed up in the microwave that she watches for it to be put in the microwave, and she will sit there and demand that it be freshly warmed, freshly warmed. <laughs> oh, my Lord, it's freshly warmed. You know, I've I've done that in restaurants. Um, <laughs> take this slop away. It's not correct temperature. I have a little meat thermometer in my pocket. I just, <laughs> I measure my Rubens to make sure they're exactly the right temperature. Good for you, Karma. Just remember that if you serve Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Direct, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. You can visit the microwaved food eater, Karma, at our Facebook page or website and you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information 
is there at proleftpod.com. And please share our show on social media. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties cannot wait until Thanksgiving when the former guy isn't reinstated yet again. Let's think about living. The cast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.